All right, kia ora. Hello. Welcome, everyone, to the beautiful Littleton Harbour here in Otatahi Christchurch for our official pre-race press conference ahead of this weekend's ITM New Zealand Sail Grand Prix. I am your host, Gordon Finlay, the sports reporter for TV3's News Hub. I've got to say, it's a pleasure to be here in the Platinum Lounge, which, uh, just look out to your left, right on the doorstep of an amazing race course for the weekend. I'm certainly looking forward to it. Now, 10 teams up the front, they will battle it out out there. We all remember, for those who were here last year, it was an outstanding debut sold out event here in Christchurch. But this year is going to be bigger and better than ever. That's because there's more fans closer to the action. What is set to be a world record attendance for a sailing event. How cool is that? Of course, it's not just the action on the water, but the action off it, which will keep the fans entertained. Uh, don't forget, we'll have Dave Dobbin performing tomorrow. And then on Sunday, sending the event out in style, another iconic New Zealand music act in Shapeshifter. Right. Let's get cracking. We'll welcome our drivers now. The man who has, he's carrying the weight of a nation. Peter Burling, give him a round of applause, guys. Our series leader from Australia, Tom Slingsby. Of course, last year's champion here in Christchurch for Canada, it's Phil Robertson. All the way from France, welcome Quentin Delapierre. The German Sail GP team, Eric Hill. A two-time Olympic gold medalist, Giles Scott of Emirates, Great Britain. The man who's finally, he's finally got himself a permanent drive for the remainder of the season with Switzerland. It's Nathan Outridge. Fresh from a podium finish in Australia, it's Nikolai Sehested of the Rockwool Denmark team. From Spain, Diego Botten. And last but not least, USA's Taylor Canfield. All right, so let's get into it. As always with the Sport of Sail GP, we've got some great moments and stories to uncover during this press conference. It's the excitement on and off the water, of course, so we'll dive into those over the coming 35 minutes or so. Right, so we're back here in New Zealand. We're <coughs> reigniting the New Zealand and Aussie rivalry. But Phil, of course, he spoiled... Pete's party last year, winning the inaugural New Zealand event. So let's find out how this year's Sail New Zealand Grand Prix will play out. First of all, Pete, congratulations. How's fatherhood suiting you? Yeah, it's been an absolutely awesome time, and um, Lucy and the little one have been going absolutely amazing. So, yeah, it's been a cool part of life. But, yeah, we're down here in Littleton now and ready to race for the weekend. Now, of course, the last event in Sydney, you sat out, <coughs> you had to watch... Nathan take over the boat. How did that feel for you? Yeah, it's definitely a little weird uh, following racing from afar. Um, you know, it was great to be able to you know, keep a lot of dialogue with our, our coaching staff and keep you know, quite connected to the team. Um, but yeah, to be honest, it's not the first event we've set out this, uh, this season. So kind of used to that after missing the Italian event due to not having a wing as well. So yeah, it's definitely been a an interesting season, but looking forward to to our home event now and, and trying to ramp up into, into the grand finals. As you say, your home event. This is the big one for you guys. I know how much you guys care about racing on your home soil. Of course, Phil <coughs> sold the show last year, but if you go with form, <coughs> when you're in the boat, you've won your last two events you competed in. So are you going for a win here, or would you be happy to settle for a podium as you look to build to, to get in that top three at the end of the year? Uh, we're always going for the win. Um, always going for the well, the hat trick for myself, but um, yeah, it's going to be an absolutely awesome weekend. Uh, if you've looked at the forecast, it's looking to to be a little step up in breeze wise from from last year from that same direction. I'm sure the the fog will burn off soon. Yeah, a fair few of the other skippers here are making it look pretty cold, but I think that's just uh, this this early morning start. To the man next to you, Phil Robertson, you upset the apple cart last year. Is that the goal again? Happy to do it again. Yeah, uh, that's the plan. So, 
look, I'm a, I'm a Kiwi as well, and it's awesome to race in New Zealand and at home and in front of all the fans. We've got amazing support down here, and especially from the YMAC Yacht Club. They're massively behind us, and they've got a huge membership. So I expect all 8,000 seats to be flying the Canadian flags. <laughs> you say the Canadian flags, but as you mentioned before, you are a very proud Kiwi. Just how much does that add to you for the, this whole weekend? Oh, it's epic. Yeah, in my professional career, I think I've raced here once before and that was here last year. So, yeah, it's nice to be back here and, and racing again. The conditions look epic and, yeah, we're, we're amped to try and defend the title. I'll bring you in now, Tom. You're a man that knows too well about the pressures of racing at home. It can be a blessing or a curse. It was a blessing for you in the last event. Just, just what does it mean to win that home event and, and how big was it for you? Because you'd been talking previous about that, to, you know, the frustration of not getting over the line, not getting a win this season. How much did that mean? Yeah, it was, it was pretty important for us as a team. It's, um, yeah, you don't want to sound like that person who's complaining when we're on top of the table that we haven't won an event and complain. So we, we were sailing so well. It was just getting quite frustrating not being able to put it all together in that final race. But, yeah, for us to get our first win in Australia is kind of a perfect little fairy tale for us. And... Um, yeah, we've got that off our back and now we can start concentrating more on the end of the season and the grand final. It was an interesting start to that uh, final fleet or the final race of three on the Sunday. Do you feel you won that race or was it handed to you at the start? <laughs> uh, well, it definitely wasn't handed to us, that's for sure. Um, yes, I, I started terribly all weekend as, as Kinley Fowler on our team said you couldn't even start a lawnmower. And uh, so it's just, I struggled all week and I said for that final race, I said, I'm not going to be late to the start. And it feels like uh, Nikolai and Nathan sort of had a similar sort of word to their teams and we all got into the start box really early. And um, yeah, we all pushed each other too early. But after that, we started a really good race and we had one opportunity to, to overtake a Danish and fortunately we were able to do that. Nathan, I just want to come to you. Got the, you know what, you, your hand issue there, was, it, was that how you sort of rugby pass to Tom? I think it looked like Tom and I were just trying to give the start to Nikolai by being a bit too excited to get going. Um, and then, yeah, I think Tom handled being over a little bit better than we did. Uh, so, yeah, as Tom said, I think we all got very excited um, at a chance to try and win the start and sail away with it and got a little bit impatient. Pete, what was it like for you watching that start? <laughs> How would you describe uh, Nathan's effort? Uh, yeah, I looked like they had it in the bag and then they, um, <laughs> yeah, just got a bit trigger happy at the... At the end, but no, it would have been nice if Nikolai stayed ahead of Tom. To be honest, um, yeah, we were quite happy with his uh, team taking a long time to get a win on the board this season. Um, but yeah, obviously it took them seven events. So, yeah. Tom, back to you. It's a windy forecast for the weekend. We know you talk about how much you like those conditions. Are you confident that if that's the the conditions we get, that that you can take the spoils on Sunday? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's it, we prefer that. You, know, you see us in those light conditions in Abu Dhabi. It's uh, for sure that's a weakness of ours, but we're a bit more confident as Aussies in the breeze. Um, we don't we don't know what to expect, and more things can go wrong when it's windy. But uh, we're just a bit more confident with our abilities and in that strong stuff. So. Yeah, we like our chances if it gets windy. What would it mean for you as an Australian to come over here and win on New Zealand soil? Uh, I think as an Aussie sportsman, it's, it doesn't matter what sport it is to come to New Zealand and try to beat the Kiwis on their home turf. It's kind of one of those bucket list items that you want to do. And uh, it's very hard to do. We've seen it in rugby and all sorts of sports that winning in New Zealand over a top Kiwi team is very hard to do. So it's for me, that's exciting. It's a really good challenge. And they beat us here last year and, and Phil beat us here last year. But... Yeah, it's a mountain to climb and it's good. We, we love getting motivation like that and we've got it this week. Do you have any advice for Pete on how to win your home event? <laughs> yeah, I think break the start early. Uh, that worked <laughs> yeah. well for us. And then, uh, no, nah, I just, yeah, uh, I don't need to give Pete tips how to win. <laughs> Pete, I'll just go back to you. We talked about that home support. I mean, this is set to be the biggest ever ticketed sailing event in the world. Like, just what does that mean? to have that sort of crowd behind you? Yeah, I mean, the amount of support we've been getting from home, <clears throat> you know, right from the beginning of the Sail GP journey has been absolutely incredible. Um, you know, I think Kiwis really love getting along to sailing events, watching them supporting, uh, you know, and just seeing the, the fan base grow and grow is 
as the events go on and uh, it's amazing to have so many passionate Kiwis down here and the, the vibe around town, around Christchurch is absolutely amazing already so we're just yeah, super excited to see what the weekend brings. Um, <coughs> yeah, I think wouldn't be lying to you if I didn't say everyone in our teams is you know, super excited about you know, racing in front of so many people this weekend. Is there a home advantage element? I mean 11,000 people each day, them screaming if you cross the finish line first, is, is there an element of that? Yeah, um, yes and no. Um, yeah, I think when we're actually racing, uh, you definitely block out all the noise and, and away you go. But, you know, to have all your friends and family down here, I think it just makes it that, that bit more special, gives everyone that little bit more motivation. And, no, it's just going to be an absolutely amazing weekend. Um, we're, we're looking forward to putting on an amazing show. you got a new name, the Black Foils. Can you just talk us through that, the idea there, and I guess the hope of helping to ignite the country to get behind you? Yeah, it's been uh, awesome to be able to launch our, our new identity, um, the Black Foils, ahead of the, the racing this weekend. You know, it's been something that I hope a hard work's gone to, to choosing what we would go with. And, you know, but to come up with such an amazing name, bring us in line with you know, other amazing sporting entities in New Zealand and really give Kiwis something to, to connect with is you know, absolutely awesome. And you know, the support from the name's been, been incredible so far and we hope the rest of the the league can uh, join suit with some some cool identities. You've definitely done better on the name front than the New Zealand badminton team. Um, Phil, what are your <laughs> as, as a fellow Kiwi, what are your thoughts on the, the team name? Yeah, it's good action. <laughs> now we hear that Canada has a a, a a new team name moniker coming up. Can you can you give us a wee spoiler on that? No, we can't uh, let anything out of the bag here, sorry mate, but we certainly have a fantastic mascot, so watch out for him and the crowds this weekend. I hear they're after name suggestions, have you got a, a, a name suggestion for your new beaver? Um, there's a lot of name suggestions for our mascot, so we're uh, standing by to, to come out and reveal the name of him, so yeah, it's All going right. to be a goodie though. Yeah, don't get yourself in too much trouble, good man. Um, all right, now, of course, following the latest Racing on the Edge episode, uh, it teased Nathan Outridge, uh, basically implying that he'd found a new team. We know now. It's the worst kept secret because you're sitting right in front of us in, in front of uh, the Switzerland team moniker on. So um, what an announcement to make uh, off the back of a turbulent season four for you. Uh, for those who might have missed it, Nathan's been a step in driver for New Zealand, Denmark and Switzerland over the course of the season to date. But disclosed in the latest episode that if he didn't get a permanent driving gig, he'd go off sailing around the world with your family. <laughs> Just talk us through that, Nathan. Ah, well, there's still time to go and do that, that's for sure. Um, yeah, it's obviously been a couple of tough years having, you know, been running the Japanese team for two seasons and then um, losing the boat, losing the drive, and then, you know, being in a supporting role with the Swiss team since then and then had a few opportunities to drive here and there. But... Uh, you know, it's it's pretty cool opportunity to be back uh, on the start line this weekend. And, um, you know, Seb had to make a pretty difficult decision um, on what he was going to do for the rest of this season. He's in really good position to win an Olympic medal. Uh, he's, you know, sort of one of the top five 49er teams. And having been to the Games and won medals myself and chatted to him a bit, um, you know, he was of the opinion that, you know, he really wanted to give it every opportunity he can to get a medal. Um, so he asked if I could fill in for him for the rest of this season, so that'll give me five events. Uh, consistency at the wheel, and um, hopefully, you know, I can keep building the team for Seb, and when he comes back next season, it's stronger. And, um, you know, I'd love to try and find a drive for season five, but if that doesn't happen, as you said, there's a cruising boat waiting and um, some tropical islands to go to. It must be nice to, you know, not be known now as the guy that just fills in on maternity leave as well. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I was waiting for someone to try and call me the baby whisperer or something like that, so <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous. But yeah, no, it's, it's really good to, to know that, um, you know, there's some consistency ahead. It's quite difficult stepping in um, to different teams and trying to, <coughs> to deliver results, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can build a little bit over the next few events. I think this weekend's going to be quite a big challenge. Um, we got 11 minutes of training in here yesterday, and hopefully we get a bit more today, but... Uh, you know, there's so many good teams in this league and, um, you know, it's an opportunity for me now with the, the Swiss program to just try and make some steps forward and, um, you know, try and get to the top half of the fleet. 
you step into a team that's at the very bottom of the sale GP ladder. What challenges come with that? And do you feel that this is a team you can take on to the podium, podium or even challenge for a win at a race event? I'd like to think that that's the long-term goal. I wouldn't, I'd be lying if I thought that we were going to make a podium or, or win here. Um, you know, you look at the talent around here and you look at how many hours these teams have done together. Um, as I said, we haven't done a whole lot of time together. We've got a flight controller who's only used um, the high-speed boards a total of like two hours now um, and, and Will Ryan on the wing, fantastic sail Olympic medalist, um, you know, in his first season as well. So, you know, what we're looking for in the Swiss program is just a steep learning curve. Um, we, we're, you know, I've obviously got lots of experience and I'm trying to share that knowledge around to build the team to try and get them to come together. And, you know, Seb's had a really tough mountain to climb, just like all the new teams have at the moment. You know, to catch up those hours of experience is really hard. And so, you know, over the course of the next few events, the goal will be to just keep chipping away. We're not expecting miracles, but uh, if we can see progression and we can see an improvement and, and eventually, you know, hopefully get a few top threes in races, that's the ultimate goal. And, you know, if things align up nicely, a podium would be great this season, but I don't think we're getting our hopes that high yet. Now, the Swiss have had success in the past in the America's Cup with foreign drivers. You don't have to look too far to, to see that. Um, if you do win an event, do you think you'll be embraced in, in Switzerland as a foreign driver? <clears throat> well, Switzerland's a, a country that's landlocked, so there's not, sailing's not a huge you know, sport for them. Um, I, I honestly think that um, you know, if, if we won an event or if we won some some races you know it'll be very well received in switzerland you know it's uh it's a great program and, and what they've put together and what they're trying to build in sail gp is is really cool um i think you know i'm sure seb would be very happy to see the team doing better and ultimately our goal is to well my goal is to to keep improving the team so that come season five when seb comes back they that they're ready to go it as i said it's really hard to to build some experience in sail gp and Hopefully I can do that over the next five events. Just on that note of foreign drivers, Phil, do you feel embraced in Canada? Massively, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm their favourite uh, son-in-law. So, no, nah, it's good. They've, they've really embraced me and embraced the experience that the team's bringing to Canada. And it's, uh, yeah, very cool to be a part of this program and see it grow. Nathan, obviously, you're not completely new to the Swiss team because it's a team you've been working with, sort of coaching them for a while. Does that, does that make it an easier transition for you? Oh, it's definitely um, easier than stepping into a, another completely new team. Um, you know, I know the guys and girls in the team really well. Uh, you know, I've been working with them for sort of a year and a half now in an advisory role. And I've done a little bit of sailing on the boat um, in, you know, the P6 role at the back and a little bit of driving. So I know that the personalities, I know the strengths and weaknesses of the guys and girls. And um, it's about gelling, creating team culture and, and trying to instill in everyone that the belief is there that we, we deserve to be here and we can compete with the best. Nikolai, Nathan stepped in for you in the Abu Dhabi event. You guys have been in, in pretty good form and things didn't really work out for Nathan, but how do you think he'll go on the Swiss boat? I think he'll do, go just fine. I think, um, yeah, as, as he said, it takes a bit of time to, as, a, as some of the newer teams, to, to get up to speed and, and, and find each other, but I think, you know, he'll, he'll do a, a good job and I don't think it'll be long before they're fighting for for podium spots. Pete, just how important is it to have, I guess, a, a sailor of, of Nathan's calibre in this league? <clears throat> well, the tricky thing with the league is it's so hard to, to build experience without actually being a part of a team in racing. Um, yeah, you see the, the new teams come into the league, they obviously get their allocation of additional training days, but it takes everyone you know, a, a long time to, to build up to, to being competitive. So. Yeah, it's something that having someone like Nate who's done two seasons in the league um, and can jump into these teams and, and be at the right end of the fleet very quickly is you know, really beneficial. But you know, we've just got to keep building out this talent base um, of people in, in, this, in Sail GP that can, that can jump in and, and fill these roles. Diego, you've talked about wanting to, to step up to the more experienced drivers. So from your perspective, what's it like having someone like Nathan back having a permanent drive? I think uh, Nathan is one of the best sellers in the world and I've grown up also watching him setting the 49er and trying to follow his steps so I think it's amazing I think he, uh, the, the better the more 
top sellers we have in the in the league, uh, the better, no? And and this league has uh, most of them in the world. So yeah, I think it's an amazing thing. Tom, you've had lots of good battles with Nathan throughout the years. You know, and you look back at the last event. What's it like to have a good old experienced campaigner like him back? Yeah, another one of the old boys. Happy for him to join us. Um, but yeah, no, Nathan's. Yeah, as an athlete in any sport, you want to compete against the very best, and it sucks if there's <coughs> people talking about how yeah the league's good, but this guy, this certain sailor, isn't a part of it. Whereas with Sal GP, they just can't say that because the very best in the world are all here. And uh, Nathan joining back into that, he was kind of an asterisk, I guess, the last season. Um, and he wasn't able to be out there racing as everyone knew that he was going to get his shot again. Um, it's only a temporary role, this one. But, yeah, I have no doubt that Nathan will be steering a team full time in the future. All right, and we can't ignore the fact that we are getting to the business end of the season. We're starting to look at that table and go, who is going to be there in the top three when we get to San Francisco to get in that big one-off race? Uh, Tom, you've said before that when your team is at your best, you'll beat any other team at their best. Do you still hold that view, given that the Kiwis have won two of the last three events? Uh, look, it's just a, it's a, an athlete thing. Uh, if, if I don't believe that I can beat Pete Burling, I'll never ever beat him. And if our team doesn't believe that we can beat them, we're, we're, you're just kidding yourself. Like, sometimes you've got teams who are sort of a bit overconfident for their ability in any sport in the world, athletes in any sport of the world, saying, oh, I could beat Rafael Nadal or something like that, a player who's 200th in the world, and you go, well, you're a bit delusional. But that's just the m mental aspect of sport. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe in your abilities. So, yeah, I'll, I'll always stand by that, I think. I think as an Aussie team, and we've shown it, so it's not like I'm talking out of my ass a bit, but it's uh, we've shown that if we perform well, we're very hard to beat. So, yeah, I totally believe it and back it up. Are you guys intimidated? Or is it, come on. We've got to have a right to reply. Pete, can, do you back yourself to beat Tom on any given day? Yeah. Um, <coughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, I want to come to you, you know, sort of one of the newer guys, but I mean, do you just have to go in fearlessly? I mean, when you've got a guy like Tom talking like that, what's your attitude? Because I guess you don't want to be intimidated, do you? No, it's, uh, it's definitely not intimidation. I think that there's, you know, we're, we are playing catch up. It's, uh, it's a tough, you know, it's, it's some of the most complex sailing in the world. And um, to try to figure these boats out and, you know, I, I think we've had a total of three and a half days of training now and only one and a half of those were in foiling conditions. So, um, yeah, we're, we're playing catch up and uh, it's, it's been a tough go, but yeah, we're competing against the best. And um, yeah, I think we have to go out there and, and push hard for every minute that we have. And, and you know, I think we've, we've done the most of it so far and um, we've seen some great progression in the team. And I, I think there's a lot more to come truthfully. So we're excited about some more foiling conditions and, and kind of sharpen our skills and, and letting the game slow down for us a little more. Tom, I'm a betting man, and, and I like my percentages. So if you were to make it into the top three again in San Francisco, what do you give yourself? Is it 40, 60, 80 percent? What, what percentage chance do you give yourself of taking out that event? 33.3 probably. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I thought you were better than, than average. <laughs> no, I'm just saying I've got to believe that we can beat these guys. It's uh, Yeah, I mean, you can read too much into this, but I... A lot of people might not admit it, but they, I think everyone up here believes that they can beat us. Like, they might not say it as loudly as I guess I do, but um, yeah. And then in the final, I mean, for sure experience counts and I like having that in our back pocket. We've proven that we can win that million dollar race, which is it's just a confidence thing for us. Like, we, we don't need to question ourselves. We don't need to question our ability. We know we can do it. And yeah, that's, that's all we need and that's all, all you can ask for. Nicola, if we go back to Sydney, once again, you're, you're in a position to potentially get that elusive win. What is it that you guys need to do? Why can't you quite get that monkey off your back? Well, I think we're just playing the statistics. If we're in the final 10 times, we'll probably only win one of them, so we're just saving that one until to the right time. Well, I thought if you're in that final race, it should be 33.3%. That's better than one in 10. You need to be aiming <laughs> higher here. Yeah, no, honestly, we are working on it. Um, we, we actually managed to lead a lot 
a lot of the fines at M1, but we just make some wrong mistakes around the race course, and it's definitely something we need to clean up and, and get better at. But as we also talked a lot about here, there's some really strong teams in the final. It's not that easy. It's, uh, we're, we're definitely pushing as hard as we can, and sometimes it's just not enough. Now, when you come to an event like this, you know, getting towards that business end, you know, you're in 30 between New Zealand and Spain. When you're out there, do you look and know where the Spanish are on the table, and do you start racing strategically, thinking let's try and push them back if we can? No, I don't think you can do that. Then you end up losing too much yourself. You just gotta, yeah, worry about your own own race and, and own sort of series, and, and put the best you can together, and then hopefully that's enough for a final in, in, on Sunday. What do you think it would mean for Denmark if you were able to get a Sail GP event win? Oh, it's, it's definitely a goal of ours, and I'm also pretty confident that it will happen eventually. Um, so, yeah, as I said many times, we're obviously very keen on, on San Fran and, and working towards that. But obviously, if you win a, a final before San Fran, you also look better in your world scores. So it's, it's not that we're not trying. We just haven't quite figured out yet how we put a final race together in, 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 in a way where it's enough to, to win it. Eric, before you get an event win, you've got to get a race win. You guys finally got that in Sydney. Are things starting to click for your German team? I think it was just a step uh, on a long road to catch up on these guys, um, and we we take it. But um, yeah, and it, we we can also see that if if you lead, you manage to stay in front, especially on the big foils. It's a little easier for us to stay on the big foils yet. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's still the same road on on, on progressing like before. You mentioned about getting that lead, and you, your starts seem to be improving. Is that something you've been working on? Yeah, I mean, most of the time, um, but um, the starting is maybe the most difficult part of, of the whole race for me um, right now. I feel like to understand how the, feel, uh, how the fleet behaves and how the fleet sets up and you know, to find a, a low risk and high potential start is quite difficult. Now after some light wind, event, light wind events, we finally got some wind in Sydney and uh, there was quite an interesting moment there with you and the, the French boat that you almost capsized. Can you just t talk us through how that played out from your point of view? I mean, yeah, we were approaching the windward mark and um, we had an understanding of them not coming in to the zone during their attack and we thought there's a chance of uh, getting inside, uh, but there wasn't. So in the end, we ended up avoiding collision with him, with Mark, and then we tried to avoid a capsize. That's mostly it. What was the adrenaline doing at that point? Uh, yeah, raised a little bit. <laughs> Canton, uh, do you think it was a reckless move by the Germans? Uh, it's the, I mean, Eric took his chance, and uh, I think it's uh, really difficult with those both to see where exactly is the, is the mark and the zone. Um, those boats are really, really fast and you just have to react in, in a second. So uh, yeah, I was uh, a bit surprised, uh, but yeah, I, at the end, you just avoid the, the contact and uh, this is uh, obviously the, the best move we can did because uh, otherwise we, we will have some uh, penalty points. So. Now, last year, you just missed out on the big final in San Francisco. You've had a lot of fourth place finishes this year. How frustrating is that? Uh, it is really frustrating, but I also know that the team is uh, doing really well. I think we are in good shape. Uh, we did uh, a really good improvements in the light wind, and now in, in the heavy winds or, or falling condition, we, we have our confidence. Um, I truly believe that we can make it. Uh, we missed it uh, last year against the Brits and it was really painful for the world team. And uh, I mean, yeah, it's part of our legacy and it matters at, at the very end when the, when the championship is coming. What do you think you need to do though at events to, to just go that bit further and, and push yourself into a, to a top three spot? I think we have to believe more, um, just I mean, we are able to do it. We, we showed it last year and yeah, it's, it's tough because we were like really equal points many times, but uh, didn't get into the final. And this is uh, high level sports. It's always those small margin that you have to manage. And I think to be honest, we don't have to change so much. We just have to believe more on uh, what we are doing. Now, no one's safe in this game. 
Erwin Fisher and Clement Pequeen recently won the 49er World Championships in convincing style. Is there a risk that they may take your job in season five? There is always always risk. Like I mean, this is the best uh, league in the world, and uh, if you are not the best, you you have to leave, and that's as simple as that. I'm fully focused that I can make it. Um, I showed it last year in in my first season, and yeah, I think it will come. Does that motivate you though to do better? Yeah, exactly. As Tom said, I think we are we just want to race race against the very best and. Uh, yeah, Juan and Clement did a really good job in Lanzarote uh, against Diego. Um, what they did is uh, really impressive, um, but I'm sure I, I can do also impressive things. I want to come to, to Giles now. Um, talk us through Sydney, you guys are sixth overall. Is it disappointing to see where you are on the ladder at the moment? Uh, yeah, I think it's fair to say we're disappointed where we are on the ladder. Um, Sydney, uh, I kind of said going into Sydney that it felt like my first proper sale GP event, and I think that kind of holds pretty true. Um, like some of the other teams out there, I think one of our biggest downsizes that our starting, particularly on the Saturday, was particularly uh, below par. Um, but I certainly feel I'm serving a little bit of an apprenticeship, and I think something that's come up pretty consistently across all these guys that have spoken before me is that time's a pretty valuable commodity in this world and I think um, from a team perspective and certainly from a personal perspective just trying to do whatever I can to fast track uh, my learning to, to, to get to a place uh, where the, the team is capable of being and, and deserves to be and um, I really don't think that's too far away it's um, it's a lot of a lot of little small things, um, but I'm sure sure everyone can say say similar. It has talked about that experience is key. Has it been a, a harder transition than you imagined coming into these boats? Uh, I don't think so. I never thought it was going to be easy. I think uh, sail GP is a as a as a circuit as a whole and as a league, it, it holds a a lot of jeopardy, um, and I think there's also, you know, it's got a bit of a short term memory. You know, teams are teams are teams do well, and then they don't they don't go so well. There's 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 ups and downs, and obviously, some of the top teams are a bit more consistent across the board. But um, yeah, I think I never thought it was going to be easy. Uh, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm positive that things can change, and hopefully, we can start turning some heads. It's a, it's a fairly good trajectory, though. We've seen you know guys have success at the Olympics and come in and have success in this league. What would it mean for you? To, to really kick on and show that you can win in this league? Uh, well, I mean, this is, this is the, the top sailing league in, in, in the world and uh, best sailors are competing in it. Um, we all want to win and I'm certainly no, no different in that. Uh, I don't, maybe I don't talk about it quite as much as, as others do, but I suppose don't let, don't let silence, um, you know, I, I think, um, get in the way of, of ultimately wanting to win. And I'm, uh, I'm certainly no different in that regard. I'm reasonably chilled out off the water, but uh, yeah, there's, uh, I've got a bit of a competitive spark in there somewhere. Don't worry about that. Obviously, Serbian Ainsley got this team into that final in San Fran last year. Mm -hmm. Is this team now in a rebuilding phase, or do you think you can make that top three? Oh, for sure, it's in a rebuilding phase. I mean, I'm, I'm fresh in and not had a lot of hours in the, in the, in the boats, and uh, yeah, and just, Doing whatever we can to get get more more time and training days. Um, but that being said, we I, I believe we're still capable of hitting the final for sure. Um, as you said, we're sat in sat in sixth at the moment. Pipe points are very tight in in the middle of the pack there in the in the leaderboard. Um, and yeah, as I said, there's there's a few well quite a few little small things that we've got to we've got to get right. But it's not that far away. Um, and yeah. I've, do, do seriously believe we're, we're capable of getting into that top three by, by San Fran. Taylor, I want to come to you. Windier conditions than other events you'd competed in in Sydney. With those conditions, do you think that made some of the newness, newness of the team show? Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a challenge. Again, we, you know, we showed up to Sydney and uh, I think we'd had one day of foiling and, you know, perfect flat water in Dubai and um, you know, we show up and 
and you know we we tow around for a day and no wind in Sydney and then you know come race day we have you know, a ton of breeze um, we go out there in the morning and try to get everything sorted for the day and uh, yeah there's uh, there's a lot going on um, and it's it's really fast pace and you know we, we go out there in the morning and feel comfortable sailing on our own and then you add nine boats into the equation and it's uh, there's, there's a lot more so but yeah I think uh, again we made some huge progress and by the end of the event you know to, to finish with a, a podium in the final race um, you know there's huge progression for the team and um, yeah we're, we're looking forward to more breezy sailing because uh, nowhere to go from but up from here so uh, I think we're gonna have a lot more of that this week and we're looking forward to it. Now we only have to look back at the history of the America's Cup to know that traditionally US sailing teams aren't that popular with New Zealanders. Um, are you looking to increase your popularity this weekend or are you quite happy to uh, to be the villains? No, we're here just to uh, disrupt. We're, uh, we're going to fight for every inch and uh, if they're in our way, you know, we'll do what we have to do. So it comes Sunday, you're happy to tell Pete to get off the stage? <laughs> Absolutely. Now, you've got some home events coming up. Um, obviously, New York. Uh, tickets are now already on sale for both New York and San Francisco. Um, and Sal GP has been crowned number five in the Fast Company Most Innovative Companies. Are you seeing a shift of support for Sal GP in the US now? Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's a goal for sure, is to, you know, to grow our sport in our country and, um, and you know, to get some eyeballs on, on what we're doing in, in this league and the, all, all the other teams. And um, we're excited. I think that you know, our, our two locations coming up in New York and San Francisco are you know, super iconic cities and iconic sailing venues. And um, I, I think there's going to be a lot of press around it. And I think we're going to get a lot of people down there watching. And um, you know, hopefully we can you know, take, the, take the throne of uh, the biggest you know, viewed event in CLGP over from, from New Zealand. Pete, thoughts? Yeah, well, there's definitely a few more people over there, aren't there? Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I think New Zealand, uh, we've got the, the beauty down here. Come on, it's a work in progress. <laughs> Diego, we know what some of the experienced guys have made comments about light wind racing in the past. As someone that wants to prove themselves in this league, what would it mean to have success in these sort of conditions that are predicted this weekend? Yeah, we started the season in, in the new configuration and we, we had almost light wind in, in every event. And Sydney was the, the, the first time we had a full foiling event. And, and yeah, I think we, we, we have been focusing a lot on, on these conditions, on these strong wind conditions, because uh, we obviously need to, to step up to, to really be in contention for, for that final. We, we think we, had, we have confidence on the understanding we, we have of the boat, but as everybody says here, you need, you need time to, to put it into practice and to mechanize everything, no? So, yeah, um, performing here for us would be very good, but uh, I, think it's, I think it's possible and, and we're going to put everything in, in the table to, to make it happen. Does that spark a fire within you when you hear guys saying that, you know, perhaps success and light conditions isn't real success? Well, I think you, you need to perform in, in every condition and to be the, uh, the best sailor, no? And, and actually, I, I prefer to, to be able to perform in, in lighter conditions than not. And, and yeah, I actually think that it's, yeah, we, we have a, an amazing team that can perform in, in every condition. And, and as I said, um, we we are pumped to to try to do this also in the in the stronger winds and and yeah I think the it's super exciting how the the table is uh, many teams are super close together to to fight for this final spot and we we kind of start feeling the pressure and and I think we we want to take on and we are very excited to go out there and, and fight for it. All right, I want to open up questions to the floor now. I know you guys have been very patient down there, so thank you very much. Just raise your hand, the media down the front, <coughs> raise your hand and we'll get a microphone <coughs> to you. If we've got questions for our drivers. Yep, down, down there, the front right. Well, good day, guys. <coughs> uh, welcome back to Christchurch. Um, 
I just would like to remind you that um, we are actually still in late summer, so you feel free to ditch the jackets if you want. Um, I'm Tom Fraser from Boating New Zealand magazine. Um, I've got a question for Phil firstly. You mentioned the WiMAC. Uh, can you just elaborate on that link and then um, explain to us what you have to do and what your crew has to do to repeat last year's performance? Yeah, the WiMAC Yacht Club is uh, yeah, a little yacht club out on the river and um, Look, they're, they're our adopter club here, and it's a cool initiative that SailGP does, is we get adopted by a club in the local areas, and um, the support we get from them is second to none. It's the biggest support we get in the world from any club, and it's, it's epic. They're uh, so great. I think they planted over a 1,000 trees last year when we arrived. We gave, went down and gave them a hand. They've cleaned up all the rivers for SailGP and the Inspire program, so it's super cool. It's cool to see what they do, and it's uh, amazing to have their support here. But to repeat the win, um, yeah, just put your foot down and go for it. I think it's as simple as that. Um, Quentin, up to you. Um, what do you make of this backdrop? It, I mean, you get the chance to sail all around the world. Is this any more unique or special than anywhere else? Yeah, it is unique. Um, um, to be honest, uh, I think uh, Sydney and Christchurch are, are the two very best Grand Prix. Um, Really good uh, sailing conditions, uh, really windy, and I and I like it. And I mean, the backdrop here in Christchurch is really special. Uh, it remembers me my my home place, uh, the Gulf of Morbihan, which is a bay of island, and it looks like a bit like this. So yeah, I just want to enjoy the the racing weekend. Raise your hand, guys. Got someone else, surely. Seated so that the, I'm not in the way of our camera because that would be bad. Um, Pete, from what you've experienced out here last year, and perhaps if you've been on the water this week, I'm not quite sure, but what is it going to take to be successful this weekend on Littleton Harbour? Um, yeah, we haven't been fortunate enough to, to get a training day on Thursday like uh, about half of the teams, but yeah, to, to be honest, today is going to be completely different to tomorrow. Um, you know, today's blowing from the, the southwest, and tomorrow's going to be blowing from the northeast. So. Yeah, I think today's about really, you know, shaking down, getting comfortable in the boat again, um, trying to work through all the, the little bits. You're, you're trying to improve in your boat handling and then you know, going back on the notes from last year and, you know, really trying to remember um, the intricacies of this, this course. Uh, yeah, although it blows straight down, there's, it's actually a little bit more puffy than, than people may think, so there's definitely plenty of opportunities to pass. Uh, and, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a, an awesome weekend again. Was that a subtle dig that you haven't been out on the water? Yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know, it feels like this event, uh, the New Zealand team hasn't, sorry, I should say this season, the New Zealand team hasn't had many days sailing compared to a lot of the other teams, you know, especially missing saint Tropez, the second day in saint Tropez, all the training in, in Italy as well. So, yeah, no, it's um, been one of those seasons, but no, we're just you know, making sure we continue to keep fighting at the right end of the leaderboard. We've got three wins on the board so far, and you know, we'll be trying to get a fourth this weekend for sure. And why is that in terms of practice out in water? Uh, yeah, it's just part of the SLGP policy. Um, yeah, all the new teams get uh, additional days, but yeah, really where the uh, controversy is around how many of the experienced teams get, get training days. Given the success Littleton has had as a Grand Prix venue, is there a case for the, uh, the New Zealand League to be here permanently, do you think? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, we'd... We'd love to, to be having a permanent presence down here. You know, and saying that, we'd love to have a home event in Auckland at some stage as well. You know, obviously, the original plan was to alternate between the two. Um, but maybe long term, we could get two events in New Zealand. It would uh, yeah, it'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, I think right now, it's all about you know, enjoying, enjoying this weekend. You know, it's got some awesome music acts uh, as well as the racing and you know, I think it'll be interesting to see whether Dave Dobman's allowed to play all the songs. <laughs> and I guess, um, thanks Pete, and just you on that as well, Phil, what do you think as Christchurch as being a potential permanent venue or would you like to see it move around the country as well? It's a little bit chilly for summer. Um, no, it'll be, it'll be awesome, it's such a great venue, you've got amazing scenery, perfect spectating opportunities for the locals and people travelling down to Christchurch to watch as well, and uh, great wind. So, yeah, it gets a massive tick from my books, and um, yeah, it would be nice to go to Auckland and maybe even some other venues around New Zealand as well at some point. But yeah, the more down here, the better. Yeah, as a 
Cantab, great final question there, Jordan. Uh, is there anyone else? Questions? Um, I might just throw to our um, Inspire candidates. We've got a few questions from them, so um, I'm gonna hand over there. Just to Phil, um, obviously you guys had the t falls on yesterday. Couldn't really uh, get much sailing in due to dolphins, I think. But um, what do you make of those foils and uh, how do you think they'll impact the league in the future? Yeah, it's cool. We've, we've been fortunate just to do a few days of testing on what's going to be new foils for the boats and our t foil. Um, the first impressions are they're really good. They bring a bit more control, which means you can put the boats on the edge and um, yeah, go a lot faster. So. The more you can sail these boats on the edge, the faster you go, and hopefully the T4s bring a bit more of that to the league. Um, Pete, how are the dynamics different with a home event? Well, I think firstly, you don't have to travel very far, which is uh, <laughs> pretty nice. Uh, we definitely spend a lot of time competing overseas so to have everyone you know, travelling to our part of the world is you know, really cool. Um, obviously, the home fans supporting us the the buzz around the city is absolutely amazing and just blows us away as to how much support we've got you know so early in our team's existence back at home um, especially with them resonating with our, our new identity but yeah and also to have so many friends and family down here cheering us on just makes for an incredibly special weekend obviously adds a little bit of pressure but you know that's what we absolutely love and what makes these re weekends so special all right, guys, looks like that is a wrap on our opening press conference. Um, don't know about you guys, but I am very excited for uh, what looks like is going to be an awesome weekend of racing. Uh, just as a reminder, racing gets underway just after 3 p.m. local time here on Littleton Harbour on both days. Uh, tickets are pretty much sold out, but if you're quick, you might just be able to bag one last one on salegp.com. If you can't make it to the event... Racing will be live on 3 and 3 now or head to sailgp.com forward slash watch for details on how you can see the action around the world. Guys, just finally, good luck to all our drivers and a round of applause for them.